Hello everyone, it's Saoirse. I'm sorry I've been gone for weeks, but the reason why I've been gone is because I was diligently reading the book that we're going to talk about today, which is Outlander by Diana Gabaldon. It was published in 1991. Okay, so yeah, I told myself if I read like 20 something pages a day, I can get this done before I go on my trip that I am leaving for tomorrow. And part of my trip is Scotland. So I thought I'll read something Scottish to kind of get in the in the mood. Well, what what in the hell did I just read? Can anybody tell me? I I wanted to like this so bad. I liked the concept when I heard about it, and I know that this has been a phenomenon for many Many years, it's wildly popular, the show is wildly popular. So, yeah, I thought, what what would there be that I couldn't like about this series? I mean, it's Scotland, it's historical fiction, it's kind of fantasy, it's... And then I found out, then I found out what is actually happening in this story. And I know I'm going to get hate for this video, and I know so many people love this series. Help me here. Um, is there something that I'm not seeing? Because I'm gonna have to issue a content warning right now. We're gonna talk a lot about rape, unfortunately, and violence. Um, this book leans on those things heavily. And not in a way that I feel is necessary to the plot. It just feels like it's written like fan fiction, and I know there's a lot of great fan fiction out there, I'm sure, but you know what I mean. It feels like somebody's rape fantasy that they built a book around, and there's a lot of really dangerous concepts in here that I think if we, if we keep doing stuff like this in media and acting like it's okay, um, like it's okay to treat people this way, and pass it off as love, we're gonna have some issues. Uh, because that, that's my main problem with this book, is that we are told that this is a love story, an epic romance, and the characters are horrendously violent with each other. We'll get into it. So, um, some other issues, and you know I never like to be negative on this channel, I I typically only make videos about books that I liked reading because I don't like to come down on another another writer because like I don't like getting criticism on my writing, but like when it is something this obscene um, and harmful I think it's okay to call it out. So let's call it out. Um, aside from all the violence, one thing I noticed about this book is it's, you know, it's massive. It's over 600 pages, and it's written in first person. And I typically write everything in first person. I get it. It's, um, I, it's my preferred way to write. A story needs a reason to be written in first person. There needs to be a reason why this story can't be told any other way. There there needs to be some character depth, some character analysis, some character growth. We don't really get that here. Throughout the book I was just wondering why, what is the reason why this is written in first person? There, we're not getting anything extra from Claire narrating the story. She's not adding anything to it. Um, so that, that was just a little, a little writer gripe of mine. And then, <laughs> something that apparently everybody knew except me was that there are a lot of sex scenes in this book and y'all know I'm not a prude. I love like a well-written lovemaking scene is one of the most beautiful things to read and hello darling and one of my favorite things to write. In this book the sex scenes range from very unsexy to downright barbaric and I tabbed each sex scene. Can you see this? I tabbed them. So you can see in the middle of the book, there's this 
section or section, if you will, where it is just constant. And that is where I really lost interest. Um, and again, I love a well-written sex scene. These sex scenes were sometimes so offensive, I almost couldn't get through them because of the rape aspect and the violence. Um, and sometimes the the words that were used were just so, so madly unsexy that it was just like, this can't turn anybody on, right? This can't. These words don't belong in a paragraph about sex. Okay, but I thought like it would be kind of fun to do a whole other video where we rank each sex scene in this book. I don't know. Is that weird? Um, I just couldn't, I could not believe how um, ineffective they were. For me, I guess, a lot of people are into them, which is, you know, to each their own. So let's read some of the, hello baby. He probably wants more food, but he just had his food. Um, let's get into some of these specific lines. And you know, I usually tab things in books that I want to remember because I liked them and I want to share them with you. In this book, there was like maybe one or two things out of 620 something pages that I tabbed that were like, oh, okay, that's a decent, decent thought there. Um, but mostly I saved things that were problematic. Disappointing. I'm really amazed I made it through this though. Um, I, I hate myself for having gotten invested in like the last quarter of the book, but there we have it. Okay, so at this point, Claire has been assaulted. She's been sexually assaulted by Dougal. And then he looks at her, this is later, he looks at her and like checks her out. And she thinks, what with one thing and another, it was some time since a man had looked at me that way. And I nodded quite graciously back. Okay. This is toxic and dangerous to write like this. And I just don't care that people will say she's writing about another time or what I don't want to hear it because that has been done and it's been done well before. This is simply, simply dangerous. Um, you're telling the audience that this woman is happy. A man who assaulted her is approving of her looks the story could have gone on without that line. We didn't need that line. Do you see what I'm saying? It's it's all stuff that doesn't further the plot and isn't necessary to a good story and the story that I think she could have told had she left the really toxic stuff out of it. I hope, I hope I'm making a whole lot of sense here because I feel strongly about it and, um, you know, anytime a woman feels strongly about something, there will always be somebody coming out of the woodwork to say that she's just an angry woman. Um, but there is a good reason why this stuff upsets me. And I mean, you, if you've been watching my videos, you know that I don't get like this about a lot of things. So I'm not, it's not like I'm just easily offended. This, this is dangerous stuff. Don't like. Okay. Next one. Are we supposed to root for this? Okay, so she's with Jamie, and at this point he is telling her that he's going to beat her because she ran away, you know, trying to get back to her own time because I probably should have told you if you don't know, this is a story about a woman from 1945 who falls through th some standing stones in Scotland and ends up in 1743. And she's trying to get back to her, hus her husband and her time period and you know, out of this scary place that she doesn't know or understand. So she tries to get away, ends up um, causing a lot of trouble because she gets kidnapped by the Redcoats, and so Jamie has to beat her as a punishment. This is He's her husband at this point. She was forced into that marriage, by the way. We love that. That's romantic, isn't it? Okay. So she says, I will not allow you to beat me. Oh, you won't? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, lass. I doubt you've much to say about it. You're my wife, like it or not. Did I want to break your arm or feed you not but bread and water or lock you in a closet for days and don't think you don't tempt me either? 
I could do that, let alone warm your bum for you. She says, I'll scream. He says, likely. If not before, certainly during. I expect they'll hear you at the next farm. You've got good lungs. He grinned odiously and came across the bed after me. This is revolting. Are we supposed to be rooting for this character? Are we supposed to be rooting for this love story? Do we like Jamie? What? This is the point where I, where she completely lost me with this story. Because up until now I was like, okay, um, some some interesting historical things, and then a forced marriage? Okay. And then, oh, he's gonna beat her, and we're gonna believe that it's love. I'm done. This is where I almost just put it down completely, but I soldiered on. Um, you, If you're at this point in the book and you don't want to soldier on, don't. Just put it down. It was so upsetting, and ever since that point, and spoilers, I'm gonna spoil the whole book, uh, he never redeemed himself, and I never got past the fact that he did that to her. And there's no- they try to explain it. There's no explaining that. I don't care what the time period is. I don't care about the way that he was brought up. You, as a writer, didn't have to put that in the book and say it was love. You could have totally written the scene a different way. Okay, I didn't plan to get this worked up, but I have feelings and I, I don't know who to talk to about this because everybody seems to like this book. Okay, what is next? So she's talking about Captain Randall. What is it that lies between him and me? The life of a good man, the honor of a girl, and an indecent lust that found its vent in blood and fear. And I supposed, with a lurch of the stomach, that there was now one more item weighting the scales. Me. For the first time I began to realize what Jamie had felt crouching in the window of Randall's room with an empty gun in his hand, and I began to forgive him for what he had done to me. So this is where, post-brutal beating by her husband, she forgives him. And it's just such a throwaway thing. It's like she's trying, the author's trying to make us come around to her side and be like, you see, it's fine. She gets his motives. They're compatible. Not okay. Um, and then the other part of this, where she says indecent lust, we're talking about Captain Randall, who I would say is a gay character, and she makes the gay character the villain. This is This is the kind of rhetoric that has set back gay rights time and time again, people constantly acting as though gay people are predators. Always predators, always out to rape. And that is, that's what this character is. He's an ill-informed, horrible stereotype, and I just don't know why it had to be that way. Couldn't we have had a villain with other, um, with another motivation other than, than raping both men and women, but like they're really focused on the fact that he um, likes men. <sighs> yeah. Um, also, so, so this book is homophobic. It's also fatphobic. There are so many references to how fat Mrs. Fitzgibbons is and any character that has any extra weight. It, the, the language that she uses to describe that is like, oh my god, I mean, it's from the 90s, but it's not from the Stone Age, like, why? I don't know. Not good, not good. Um, here. <sighs> Jamie is literally going to rape her. I didn't ask your preferences in the matter. Uh, you are my wife, as I've told you often enough. If you didn't wish to wed me, Still you chose to, and if you didn't happen to notice at the time, your part of the proceedings included the word obey. You're my wife, and if I want you, woman, then I'll have you, and be damned to you. His voice rose throughout until he was near shouting. So this is <clears throat> literal rape. He's telling her he will not 
like she, she won't be able to stop him he's going to do what he wants she's basically his property then he gives her a ring like a wedding ring and she forgives him so it's all okay now are you are you seeing my issues with this um it would be one thing if if she wrote a story like this and made it very clear that what was happening was bad and we shouldn't root for it but, but she doesn't do that it's very much the other way where we're supposed to buy this as a glorious love story okay then we have another gay character who is characterized as a rapist um this is the duke Blah, blah, blah. Then his grace caught my eye on him and smiled jovial at me, his expression saying, Worth a try, eh? Despite myself, I smiled back. Much to my surprise, I quite liked the man. This is after the Duke pats Jamie on the leg and um, Jamie tightens because he doesn't want that because it's an unwanted advance because this man has been known to assault people. Much to my surprise, I quite liked the man. So he's just a jolly rapist and um, Claire's fine with him. I can't, like, pick a direction. Are you, rape bad or rape good? What, where do you stand on this? I, hmm. Okay. Then here we have an example of Claire being far from a sympathetic character. I mean, I, I want to side with her because she's the one being beaten, but uh, she, she's not a character that I, like, I want to read about, and this is where my issue with her being the narrator comes in. She just, she doesn't, I don't know, she just doesn't inspire a lot of interest or sympathy. So when she's being tried as a witch, she thinks, with my life hanging in the balance and my future entirely dependent on the eloquence of this skinny, skinny little man, I should have hung wrapped on his every word. Instead, I found myself yawning appallingly, unable to cover my gaping mouth, and shifting from foot to aching foot, wishing fervently that they would burn me at once and end this torture. Well, now I don't care if you're burned as a witch. Like, what? Why? Why would you not pay, show some respect and be... I don't know. Respect the person who is literally saving your life right now. And is doing it out of like the goodness of his heart. Oh, he's so boring. There's a way to write that this character is boring without the main character whose life is on the line being the one who's like, I'm bored, he's so boring. Oh, just really like... Mm. She's not fun to read about. Oh, here's a fun little line. Um... Claire's talking about why why would Gylas kill her husband? Um, or Jamie doesn't understand. I don't understand why she should kill him, though, he said, shaking his head in puzzlement. He had money, a good position, and I doubt he beat her. Claire says, and that's your definition of a good husband? He says, well, yes. What else might she want? Again, people will say, it's the time period. That... If you're writing a book now about that time period and those um, backwards beliefs that a woman is property, you might want to frame it as that person being the villain because we in this era don't or shouldn't see that as love and Jamie is just not... He, he isn't somebody that I could ever be like, yeah, he's a good partner. He's not. You know, typically in these stories where you're dealing with a time period where there are backwards views of women, the love interest man, he usually goes against the grain and he miraculously treats the main female character well. And she doesn't do that here. He's just another jerk who has the, these beliefs of his time and um, doesn't that doesn't add anything to the narrative. Like, that doesn't make for a good, strong love story. Maybe I'm just not getting it. Maybe I'm not getting it. Like, maybe we are just supposed to be like, oh, this is a realistic look at how terrible things were. But I just don't think that's how people are reading it. I think they're reading it as this is something good. 
this is gross. So there, it is so incestuous between Jamie and his sister. What in the hell is that about? His sister Jenny says, There's men as are sensible, and beasts as are biddable. Others you'll do nothing with unless you have them by the ballocks. So she, his sister, literally is grabbing his balls. Grabbing them. Oh, I mean, it's revolting. Like, when is there a situation when that's normal? Was that normal? Are you going to try and tell me that was normal back then? Or is this just some weird stuff that the author wanted to put in there? That grossed me out so much. Okay, so then there's even more incest suggestion. And there's the fact that, that Jamie always talks about how Claire looks like his sister, and he's so passionately attracted to Claire. Mm. Okay, so Jenny is really pregnant at this point, and there's this scene where she is like... <clears throat> making everybody in the room feel lustful feelings. <sighs> oh no, wait, this is a different scene. I think this is a different scene. It's all gross. So Jenny's saying she missed Jamie every day since they took him away. The broad-cheeked faces were once more mirrors of each other, but the expression that they wore was such that I rose and stepped quietly through the kitchen door to leave them alone. As the door swung to behind me, I saw Jamie catch hold of his sister's hands and say something huskily in Gaelic. She stepped into his embrace, and the rough, bright head bent to the dark. I don't like the use of the word huskily in a scene between a brother and sister, and the way that their faces looked so they needed some alone time. It's just... It's just the writing, man. You don't have to write a scene like that in such a weirdly suggestive way. It can, it can be tender. You can absolutely write a tender scene between a brother and sister where it's just about the emotion, how much they love each other as siblings. Why does it have to have these weird connotations? Okay. Here's just an example of where I think if you're debating reading the book or just watching the show, if you're interested in the story, the writing can't really redeem this story. I don't think it's something that needs to be read, and that's coming from me who always reads the book before watching the movie or the show. Listen to this line. It was a beautiful bright autumn day with air like cider and a sky so blue you could drown in it. Those those metaphors just don't work. You have to you have to be more I don't know, not specific, but like, air like cider. What does that mean? That could mean anything. Does that mean crisp? Does it mean clear? Does it mean made out of apples? Um, a sky so blue you could drown in it. Do you, do you drown in everything blue? It's just like, oh no, it, that didn't, that didn't work. And so, yeah, the writing is not like, artful and you guys know I'm just I'm just a slut for like beautiful poetic writing with a lot of character analysis and so this is not like that at all this is all action and story and you know plot stuff and there's a lot of I don't know what the term is plot plot juice plot whatever there's a lot of stuff that is very like oh this is for plot you know, like, I can see, I see what you're doing. You're putting, you're planting that in there for plot. Or she wouldn't even plant things. She would just have something happen and then kind of explain it later. Be like, oh, right. And I knew this because of something that someone told me a while ago, but I didn't put that in the story. And I get it. It's hard writing a really long book um, and keeping all your details straight. But man. Here's another gross bit with Jenny and Jamie. She wants him to rub her feet. Um, the uncle in question grinned and came across to sit on the hassock, Jenny amiably moving her feet, then replacing them in his lap. Rub them for me, Jamie, she begged. You're better at it than Ian. He obliged, and Jenny leaned back and closed her eyes in bliss. It's almost sexier than the sex scenes. Um, the, the use of the word begged and bliss. I... Ugh, it's just gross. It's so gross. Um, this is this is her brother. Oh, and then he okay. Ooh, 
she dropped the tiny shirt on her central mound, meaning her stomach, her pregnant belly. Which, just please don't use that word, don't ever use- it's so gross, that word. Um, her central mound. Which continued to heave as though in protest. Jamie stared entranced at the movements, just as I had. We're just gonna move on, because it gets too- it gets too nasty. Again, it could be a totally normal scene. This could have been written in a totally normal way, where a brother is, like, fascinated by his sister's pregnancy, not in a creepy, sexually charged way. Okay. Oh, great. So here's another part where he's turned on by his sister. The smoky air was filled with the trance over the room, the feeling that lies at the root of lust, the terrible yearning need to join and create. I could have counted every hair on Jamie's body without looking at him, and knew each one stood erect. That is written about Jamie's response to his sister. Okay? Yearning. Erect. Lust. What are we doing here? What is this? Am I the only one? I can't be the only one seeing this. Ah! Alright. We're almost done with these quotes. So here, it's after uh, Jenny's given birth to her baby, and Jamie's saying he's kind of glad that, that Claire can't have children because he wouldn't want her to suffer that way. She says, I wouldn't mind. He says, I would. I saw Ian's face. It was like his own flesh was being torn each time Jenny screamed. I can bear pain myself, but I couldn't bear yours. That would take more strength than I have. So he is a sadistic hypocrite because he actually says that he enjoys beating her. And not as part of some, you know, BDSM safe word kind of consensual situation, which is great. He likes doing it because he knows that she's not enjoying it. He likes to beat her. But here, if she experienced childbirth and was in pain, he couldn't bear it. So it's only okay when he beats her, when he inflicts pain on her. This guy is sick, and I hate him. <sighs> okay, then we get some mommy issues, because he has sister issues and mommy issues, and daddy issues. So after he has been, I think this is after he gets out of prison, he says, I want to hold you hard to me and kiss you and never let you go. I want to take you to my bed and use you like a whore till I forget that I exist. And I want to put my head in your lap and weep like a child. Do you want a man to say that to you? Is that like the sexiest thing you've ever heard? That sentence? I just... Alright. That's all I'm going to pull out of here. So... We all know, if we're familiar with the story, the extremely shocking and upsetting event that happens toward the end, where Jamie is raped by Captain Randall. And he tells Claire, once he's in a safe place at the Abbey, he tells her to leave him, let him die. He can't be her husband anymore because he associates her with this rape because he was thinking about her at the time, and so what does she do to save him? Something that I don't think any of us would have expected if you were reading, if you were reading, you know, a little synopsis and you'd be like, well, pff, what could, what could anybody do at this point, you know, aside from perhaps a trained psychologist, but no, Claire decides to re-traumatize him re-traumatize him, and it fixes him, question mark? She pretends to be his rapist and gets him to attack her brutally until he is crying on the floor as if she is his mommy. So she goes from rapist to mommy. And this fixes him. Let me just say, this is not how trauma works. 
you can't fix somebody that way. There is no fixing. Trauma is a very complicated thing to deal with and live with on a daily basis. And it is not handled well in this story. It is not handled responsibly. And that is my main issue with it. If you're going to write about something like that, it can't be done in a way that says, well, just re-traumatize your husband and then he'll be okay and you can have more sex scenes together. When he was previously on death's door because of this trauma. So problems with this book, rape that um, is irresponsibly portrayed, violence irresponsibly portrayed, these things both do, could, um, could not be in the book and the book would be fine and better. So it's not as if they're necessary. They just aren't necessary. It's, it's that sort of thing that is like, that I hate, which is like shock value. And they do this a lot in books and especially shows and movies, something for shock value that doesn't really teach um, a lesson. There's no moral in it. I would kind of argue that if we're talking about stories that include rape as a central theme, look at Girl with a Dragon Tattoo. In that book, it is characterized as being this abhorrent, terrible thing. And the original book is called Men Who Hate Women. And the character seeks revenge. And it is all to say that these are the terrible things that men do to women. And this, these are the, the scars that they carry from that. And this is how lives are ruined because of that. That's handled, I think, in a much more responsible way than this. It's still going to be problematic for some people and difficult to read, and I understand that. But anyway, going on from rape, violence, we also have fat phobia, homophobia, and normalizing all of these things to vulnerable readers. Because you can't know who's going to pick up the book that you wrote. So there will be people who pick this up who are probably too young and think it is a beautiful love story, um, and that it's normal and okay to have violence and rape at the center of your relationship and that you can forgive someone as long as you understand where they're coming from. Uh, there's no understanding of trauma or psychology in this book. And some really scary information that I learned when I was like looking up, does anybody else think this book is problematic? Apparently the author reportedly, allegedly said um, during like a convention panel that her favorite scene in the show was Jamie getting raped and that she could watch it over and over again. If that is true, how scary. And, and, and doesn't that just kind of say it all? It really makes sense um, when you know where the author's coming from. It makes sense why the things that happen in this book happen. Um, so yeah, I will probably stop reading this series as I said, I did hate myself for getting invested in the last quarter of the book, but that was when, you know, all the unsexy sex scenes were done, and um, I was starting to just get used to spending every morning for like an hour with these characters. And I was like, well, let's see, what are they gonna do next? I'm, I'm kind of into like the story at this point. Um, this is, you know, post all the beatings and rapings before the final rape. Um, and there were some redeeming qualities about it, and then, yeah, then it went downhill. But anyway, I will probably not be able to continue with, with reading this, and that's for the same reason that I could not continue after I read the first Game of Thrones book. Because in that book, like in this one, it read to me as if the author was getting some sort of enjoyment out of writing some really horrific stuff. And I don't feel that about every book. I didn't feel that about Stieg Larsson writing The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. I felt very much the opposite, that he was disgusted by men who did this to women. In this book and in Game of Thrones, it felt like they were really enjoying writing 
these terrible things um, in Game of Thrones, so much rape of, of like underage girls and um, incest and just, I, I'm like, I don't want to hang with these people. I don't want to hang with this story. You know, this is not, and I read really depressing stuff that is not like a pick me up. You know, I'm not out here reading, um, you know, cozy mysteries and like romance and stuff. I'm not, I, I read dark stuff, but this is taking it too far. It's just taking it too far because it's not done in a responsible way. For that reason, I'm out. Um, Shark Tank. But yeah, it, with Game of Thrones, I watched, I ended up watching the whole series in one week because I had, I did that like HBO free trial for a week. So I was like, let's just bang it out um, so that I can say I've done this. I've seen the show. So I might continue watching Outlander, but I've heard from some people that they could not continue after a certain scene, and I kind of feel like I know which scene that is going to be now. Um, so like, I don't know. Don't Maybe don't spoil anything in the comments, because um, some of us might continue to, to watch the show from a scientific standpoint. This is for science at this point, um, and, and the aesthetic of Scotland. Because at least it's pretty to look at the landscape. Uh, but sometimes I've, I've watched um, like half of the first season so far and I have to just look away from the, the gratuitous violence. It, it is shock value violence. It doesn't add anything. Um, and maybe I am just getting less and less tolerant of seeing violence for violence's sake. I can't do slasher movies anymore. Um, anyway. Yeah, I think that's it. I was I really went into this thinking like, oh, a story about Scotland. I'm so excited. I lived there for a year. I'm gonna. This is not my Scotland. This is, <laughs> this is. I don't know who, whose Scotland this is. Um, I'm just I'm bummed. I'm bummed because yeah, wanted to, really wanted to have another series to sink my teeth into. You know, I'm, I've got a couple books left of the Dune series, and other than that, you know, I don't have a lot of series-type things. As an adult, as a kid, that was easy to find. Um, as an adult, apparently what we get is Game of Thrones and Outlander, which is very upsetting. Um, and maybe I'm not into... not into fantasy that isn't Lord of the Rings. I don't know. Recommend something. Recommend something as a palate cleanser, please, for all of us uh, after reading this book. If you could, that would be great. And that's all I will say for now. Please don't hate me. Don't hate me, um, Diana Gabaldon. Don't hate me, um, people who are in the writing world who have power to uh, to say no to my writing if I submit it to things. I always fear that. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna say I didn't like something and then and then I'll never I'll never write again because I'll be like blacklisted. But dude, this is one time where I just feel like it has to be said because I can't be the only one seeing the issues here and thinking that this goes beyond um just storytelling. This is scary stuff. And just so not expected. I mean, every, like, you should have seen my face while I was reading. I'd be turning the pages going, what? Excuse me? Like, how is this in here? Did I get a copy of this book that is maybe somebody has fiddled with it and added these things? Because this cannot be the series that everybody's going on about. It can't be. This can't be happening. I, and I've read a lot of stuff. And I've read Dune. That's weird as hell. Anyway. I'm gonna go because I gotta rest before this trip tomorrow. I'm heading to Chicago and Paris and London and Edinburgh and yeah, I'm stressed because I am the type of person who gets trip anxiety, not trip excitement. But it's gonna be great and I've started another book, some, some um, history this time, some nonfiction about the man who invented the Marconi, which was used on 
the Titanic. Can you see my Titanic picture? Um, it was used on the Titanic to send messages. So that's fun. All right, I will see you all next time. It will be a few weeks because of this trip. Forgive me. Um, I have not disappeared entirely. I just had no time to read anything else while I was reading this. And if you have any requests for videos you'd like to see related to books and writing and reading, that is always, always accepted and I would be grateful. So thank you for watching and hanging out. Until next time, happy reading.